Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Kelly Osborne is our guest tonight. Hi. I was, uh, I was watching uh, the Biography Channel today, and they said, uh, will you remember these names in 20 years? And uh, Kelly, Kelly Osborne's name was in that. Interesting. Which is... Which I is, didn't expect anyone to know who I am in five years. This is just our 15 minutes, you know? Oh, really? Do you yeah. really feel I, that I way? I really do feel that. And I think I'm kind of going to go away for a while after this is all over. It's a bit much when you're so... Oh, really? Anything. Really? And do no, what? And then... Nothing. Nothing. Just like, go on an island somewhere. And, yeah, I think that'd right. be fun. You know, everyone has their 15 minutes. And I don't expect mine to last very long. Well, I'm just doing it because it's fun. No. Are, are you... But are you hoping it's going to stretch into 30 I mean, minutes if, if if it does great if it doesn't i mean <laughs> oh well really yeah and i don't you, think fame and money makes you a person are you resentful that you put this position no no you because like it. what it's given you like it yeah yeah but uh, but in terms of longevity i mean i mean you know what very few people are lucky enough to have a long career in the spotlight my dad being one of them right. and i mean i cannot expect that well, I know you couldn't. I mean, there's a difference, though, between what you expect and what you hope for. You know? I mean, maybe you don't expect it, but what do you or, hope or, or, for? Or what do what you would want? you like? What do you want? Yeah, what do you want? I just, to be honest with you, I want to be known as being a good person and just be happy, and that's all you could really ask for. And what would that be for you? Being happy. Hold on a second. I'm just curious. You don't have to break it down that far. No, because I'm... Uh, because, because, <laughs> being happy. Yeah. No, because being happy may mean it being a well, mother she or being mean, a successful business person. She, or oh, no, kids, I'm not that kind of person. Yeah, having kids or having a... Family. I mean, I think ki- kids would really make me happy. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I, to be honest right? with you, if I got pregnant tomorrow, I think I'd have the kid. I think, I think, because I love kids. Mm-hmm. Who do you like better, me or Drew? <laughs> I mean, it's too early. It's too early in the game. <laughs> I may have misunderstood <laughs> what she was saying. Yeah. She likes immature people. So, Adam, good. Uh, yeah. and Drew's, no. Drew's, you know, he's a doctor, though. It's pretty good stock. <laughs> yeah. And so, what, what are you, 17? I'm 18. 18. And, and did you, I mean, when, when the cameras came into your, I mean, did, did you want to sing? Did you want to be in front of the cameras before the cameras found you? Um, I, do, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I kind of saw myself as like a lost soul because I never went to school. I had no ambitions. I didn't want to have a job. I didn't, I'd get jobs and then I'd go for a week and quit. And I just, I saw my brother going to a record company every day, my sister going and writing her music, and I just felt like the biggest loser. And I just was like, what am I going to do with myself? Right. And I truly 100% believe that if I didn't, do the TV show, I'd probably weigh about 300 pounds and still be in front of a TV. So you, you felt like, I mean, did, so a camera being in your house motivates you? It, no, you know what? It didn't motivate me, but it opened doors to enable me to do what I wanted to do and find something that was fun that could make me some money to eventually, along the line, like set me off to do anything. You how, know? how far did you get in school? 10th grade. 10th grade. And, and you, you talked about sitting in front of the camera and eating. Is that what you used to do to sort of make yourself feel good? I would get depressed and I would sit down and I would eat. Yeah, in front of the TV. What did I say? You said camera. Camera, TV. Yeah. Not TV. Yeah. I, would sit, I would sit there and I would eat. Ever since, since the TV show has come out and I have started doing stuff that makes me happy, I've lost 35 pounds. Interesting. Which is weird. Like when I get depressed, I will just sit there and I will eat all day long. And my mom does it too. I didn't know that your mother had the gastric bypass surgery. I no, 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 she didn't out. have that. It, um, oh, she, she was going to have that, but she had this thing called a lap band put on her stomach, which is like an elastic band. It's like the new, it's like... Similar idea, but it's just a yeah, you know, and it's elastic re- band. And right. it, it, it's removable as well. Like when you have that gastric bypass surgery, I mean, you cut out a huge part of yourself and it's irreplaceable. You can't go back and put it back, you know? Right. And when you do the surgery, they were going to make my mom go on videotape saying, if I die, I won't sue and all this stuff. And that kind of made her like, oh, I can't do this. So then she found another way. And and in like a year, she's going to have it taken out because you can only have it inside you for five years. Oh, really? Yeah. And then um, you get it taken out and you just, your your stomach actually shrinks so you don't want to eat as much anymore. And how's your mom's health now? 
You know, she's doing really, really good. She re- recently she's been a little bit tired because towards the end of the chem- chemo is when it it's the worst on your body. Mm-hmm. So, but she's only got it through February and she's done two more months. So. Wow. Great. Well, keep our fingers crossed. We'll uh, hear uh, some music from the uh, CD, Shut Up, which is uh, out as we speak. And uh, take some calls. Got one for Kelly right off the top. Brittany? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. What's up? Hi. Um, I'd like to congratulate you, Kelly, on your new album. I oh. bought it. And I wanted to know, um, for the song, More Than Life Itself, is that supposed to be about your mom? Yeah, I did. I did write that one about my mom. That song is so beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. I really adore you, Kelly. Oh, thank you. All right. See, you know what? I don't don't know what to say when people say stuff like that to me because it's so nice, and I feel like if I just say thank you, it's not enough. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, you're really uh, really nicer than I pictured you. (laughs) Oh, really? Everyone thinks... Yeah, no, um, I a bitch. So. I, you know what it is? You know, no, not not a bitch, but I thought well, she's going to be a little snot nosed because hard. See, I'm not. I, if anything, out of all of my family, I'm the least snot nosed. <laughs> I'm bossy. <laughs> right. I am bossy, but I'm I'm not stuck up. Well, I think you know what it is. Is I I think it's sort of. Uh, Society has an impression of people that have success early and fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just assume if this person is having a lot of success at 16 or 17 years old, they're going to you know be a else? head case. It's a lot of footage of Kelly and Jack sort of at each other. Yeah. It makes you think that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. All right. But uh, listen, I'm, I'm delighted that you're not. <laughs> Let's uh, look at that laugh. Yeah, it's a great laugh. Let's talk to uh, Rich. Really, I take pictures of that more often. You never get to see that. He's talk- Hold on. True. You want to talk in your microphone? Uh, not it? to the camera. I'm talking to the cameraman. So. The MTV cameras are in here, and uh, Drew's talking to the camera. Although I'm assuming he's talking to the cameraman is operating the camera. Drew, are you aware of that? No, I was talking to the producer at the other end of this. this line, oh, okay. So you want to use this as your do. personal intercom? Yeah, you nice. want to plead to yeah. get Loveline back on MTV <laughs> at this point? I know. Where did it go? I used to watch it, like, every day. Well, she's got the power. Drew got a gray pube, and they threw us off the air. <laughs> MTV has a policy. They see any gray pubes, you're out of there. <laughs> and, uh, I, I plucked it for a while. I almost missed he it. He tried dyeing it. He tried he waxing. Just wore a hat. No uh, one I'm, no. I'm, I'm no. working. No, not my not, head. Not the pube. The gray, pubic gray, hair. The gray. pubic hair. Well, why would they be staring at your dick anyway? Well, you know, they have inspections at MTV. You know how it is. <laughs> That, you got, it's, 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 it's really it's really the gist of the lawsuit, and it's something we can't get into at this point. But uh, we will be well compensated when it's uh, when the dust clears. Rich, yeah, that really should be MTV's policy because they, they do have a lot of people that are sort of in the, they're getting they act young, but they're getting into their later thirties, sometimes yeah. early forties. Uh, this for, a great first yeah. gray pube out, you're out. Yeah, it'll be called the, the droop. The Principal. droop. Yeah. Pew well, I've got claws. a long time to go over that, so it's oh, all yeah. right. You got time. Unless, and because I'm a girl, I can just shave it off and they'll never know. Right. Oh. Well, they... Oh, wait a minute. I haven't it, thought about that. Well, it's that's too late little, for that's that. That's a little bit weird. Drew, if, if I shave it all off? If your uh, vagina worries a lot, where your pubes go gray faster... Th- I think that's true. I think I it do does. Too. If you're stressed... No, just the vagina, though. If the vagina's worried, yeah, I think that's probably right. Well, well can your vagina get... Oh, my God. Can your vagina get worried? I think it can. I, well, because there was a thing I know it on, can be happy. on Sex of the City, how mm-hmm. my vagina's depressed. That's what... Two so. things. Don't believe that show and don't believe this man. Well, I Those believe it, to things. be honest with you. No, no, no. Thank you. You don't have a vagina, so I don't know if you'd know about that. True. Has, your ovaries can get anxiety. Oh, really? Yeah. Can okay. they? Anxious over. Sure. Oh, shut up. Rich, <laughs> now I'm believing it. <laughs> Rich, you're 16. Yeah. What's up? What's up? I love you guys. You guys are like the best. I love you guys all the time. <laughs> Thanks. Um, my question was, when you're, like, eating out a girl, if you get any of, like, her juices in her mouth, is that bad for you? No. In your mouth? Yeah. Go ahead, Kelly. Let them have it. Okay, if you're eating out a girl, of course you're going to get her vagina juice in your mouth because that's what your mouth is. And it's just the same as if she was to suck your dick. Ooh, wait a minute. Are we allowed to say that? Yeah, we are? Yeah. All right. That's under the wire. Hey. 
It's the same. Like, what do you expect if you were to jizz in her mouth? Oh, she's going to die? It's the same if you... If... Well, but now, think about it for a second. Now, there, there is, if you stand by, you're, you're right. I think you're offended that he's sort of thinking this is dirty and that's sort of... It's the same feel. thing. If you wouldn't want a penis in your mouth, don't, like... But, but there are the fluids either way. The, from the male. Uh, that's true. If, if she had some kind of like funky disease, right? And, Just like if the guy had some funky. Yeah. Thing. If if either like male or female had a funky disease and and you went like down there and put your mouth on it, of course you can get like the herp or something. But and the virals, the hepatitis, and the HIVs and stuff. But HIV. Possible. That's only if you have a cut in your mouth, right? No, not not necessarily. It's just it's a very difficult way to get it. That's all. HIV would be difficult to get yeah. for, from going down on a girl, very right? Difficult. That's the least likely way to get it. You know, it's funny. I had a long-winded discussion with a few guys from my office today on the uh, term that offended us the most. Yeah. And uh, eating out yeah. was number was one. Fingering number two. Followed by finger banging yeah. number two. And then number three, when a girl says, give me head. That was the third. I know. I'm, I don't understand. I don't know any girls that use that. It, it happens once in a while. And I always find it a little bit distracting and off-putting. But I we, we announced that eating out was our, our, our the most graphic and sort of Left a bad taste I'm, in our mouth. No, but it's the not. Pun. But it, like, you could at least like think of a cute way to say it, like lick a thief, or just instead of like. Yes, eating instead out. of like, it just doesn't sound right. It's like, if no. you, what am I going to go get a burger down there? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't sound right, and it, it hasn't come up on this show in quite some time. Has it driven the term not. eating Thankfully out? Until this lengthy discussion, no, I've not. Well, not I'm just, been, I'm just saying, that I had the discussion at my office. Yeah, yeah, today, no, I, and thank you for bringing it. Here. And it it's came good. up in good times. Shut up! It yeah. came up in the first break. Of tonight's show. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Jeremy. Yeah. You're 20. Yes, sir. You're on with Kelly Osborne. All right. Well, actually, I've been seeing this guy for, well, we've just been hanging out for about two months now, but it never really got serious. And you're gay. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, true. We know. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry. I didn't Good know. Good to know. And uh, we were kind of by ourselves earlier tonight, actually, and we were kind of in the midst of things. And he was able to get it up, but it didn't really, it didn't really stay up, and it didn't really progress anywhere. So I actually, I'm not really sure how to, if I should discuss that with him or how to really approach that subject. Well, I, I think you should, well, because maybe if he had a history of, of drug use, that can have a lot to do with it. Absolutely. And, and or maybe he was just nervous about like being alone with you, and, and that really can have a lot to do with it too. Right, actually, I was thinking that myself because he does kind of smoke it, a lot, so and I have heard that you know that I can have uh, had that to do with it. So yeah, pot can uh, raise estrogen levels, decrease testosterone levels, can just uh, just by virtue of the effect on mood and its particular pharmacology. And it doesn't it, it doesn't hurt to talk to people about that. This, this is your boyfriend of long standing. No, no, he said it was. I wouldn't say no. We've only been together for about two months. Actually, we're not even dating that seriously. So, so, have, have you had sex? No, uh, this was kind of like the first time that we were going to mess around. But the other question that I had was... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, but you've been dating someone for two weeks and you haven't done anything. Gays get it on. That is such a generalization. I know, I know, it's true. It's like generalizations are... They're always right. But it probably because... That's kind of weird. Jeremy, do you have have a boyfriend? Another boyfriend? No. uh, Okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, there really should there really should be any sort of intimidation factor there, you know. And yeah, but you don't know like weird. his past history with stuff like that. It just, no, if I were you, I would seriously. just. Yeah, if I were you, I would just ask him, talk about it. Is he on medication? No, not that I'm aware of. Maybe, maybe all right. Maybe he's ambivalent. A lot yeah. of young men who are gay have mixed feelings about it. Maybe he's having difficulty in that department. Well, okay, just well, talk to him. I agree with Kelly. Yeah, definitely. And I don't, I'm not worried about talking to him, but also. All right. <gasps> so mean. Mm, nah. Nah. That's not mean. That's it, It's like saying a, a lion is mean for taking out a, a limping gazelle. You know what I mean? It's nature. Do you no. see what I'm saying? It's evolution. It's Darwinism. No, the strong mean. survive. We have to help others. <laughs> this kid's fine. He had a secondary question that wasn't going to be much of anything. Now we have to hear it, right? There goes. He's yeah. gay. But, Jeremy? <laughs> What is the secondary question? Well, since it never really went anywhere, you know, I was wondering, he also didn't make any moves as far as going down or anything like that, so are there any other inhibitions that you think might be going on there? John, I, I think to, he has ambivalence. We'd have to talk to him, really. There's, there's, it's, I find it, there are two things we find peculiar about this, that this relationship didn't 
evolve as quickly as most gay relationships do physically. Already they're sort of like, hmm, that's funny, interesting. That's so not it's, true. It's, I don't think look, I don't think that's a fair statement because everyone's different Kelly, with how they start relationships. It, it, it is, and I'm not. And there are reasons why everyone's different, and these guys are different than everyone else, and that's hmm, that's interesting. Because he likes penis instead of vagina. Whatever. I think that's fair. That's fair enough. But he, they're they're evolved kind of differently compared to other gay, gay males. And then he didn't talk with them about this obvious sort of problem they were having. They didn't, didn't continue to discuss. Well, the guy what can't get an erection, and he's not giving this guy. Well, maybe he's not up. really gay. Well, that's what Adam said. That's what Adam said. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, they have feelings about it. Just talk to him. It. Or, yeah, could, we don't know. We'd have to talk to him to find out more. All right. Let's, uh, Bye. let's go to line. <laughs> oh, don't get attached to the callers. They'll, they'll take you down with them. <laughs> Melissa? Hello? You're, uh, you're 18? Yeah. You just make fun of them and then you head right up to the mansion and just relax. Okay. Travel around on the so car, cut some CDs. Don't worry about it. Melissa? Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, I'm about, I'm a senior in high school and I think I'm like a month pregnant. And okay. I wanted to know if Dr. Drew knew anything. Like, I, some of my girlfriends were telling me that, well, this one girl named Catherine, she got an abortion once and she said that, that she got a temporary emergency medical card yes you can get you will get can get this covered i bet she's delighted you uh, wove Can't. her name into the abortion no question, uh, also also you can go to planned parenthood i have a yeah. friend who just went there and they helped her in every way and right. they, it was totally anonymous and right. it cost 365 dollars. and they won't set up the medical for you there no, they, they they gave me this other number, but well, listen, it's going to take, take some work. I've listen. said many times on this show, the three sixty five for the abortion. How much did my dad spend raising me, Drew? Twelve eighty. Well, I don't. Uh, not he didn't break a thousand, but it was but, in the high nines. Also the fact high that, nines. Uh, have you told your parents? My father's a preacher. My mom's a retired cop. So, oh, um, well, no, this. Do you have any friends that could lend you the money? No, and and Mike's being a total asshole about it. You know. Who is the... The, the boy. Did she... Would well, you know what? Hold on a second. Did she use his name? What did oh. you call him? She did use his name. You call... Okay, hold on a second. She she called about an abortion. She she wove in the girl's name who had the abortion, and then she just wove in her boyfriend's name. Yeah. I'm, I'm starting Unusual. to think bogus here. Yeah. Or, That's sort of a, a clue that people are making calls up when they put their names in. Yeah, why? Most people would not. They're, they're careful to make things anonymous. Yeah. Or she just could be an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, good point. I think Kelly may have a point here. <laughs> Melissa? Yeah? It, bogus call or are you an idiot? I'm not an idiot. I'm oh, smart. bogus call. <laughs> it was A or B. But what if she's telling the truth? All right. What if she's telling the truth? Okay, okay. Hello? Hi. Yeah, do, what I want to know, how do I set up this medical thing? And Did they do it if you're 18? Yeah, you can do it at any age. Really? You just yeah. Well, not any age. I, I don't know the details on this, but I, I think fourteen is a cutoff on this, and, and in some right. states it's different. And uh, but, but wait, let, I have to be under fourteen. Just don't no, stick no. a wire coat hanger inside of yourself. Get it yeah. done right. Use a wooden one. Um, o- okay. Over fourteen. Well, you said fourteen. Over you over fourteen. Oh, okay. How old are you? I'm eighteen. Okay. Oh, you have no problem. Listen to me for one second. This this boyfriend of yours who got you pregnant. Yeah. He can't, between the two of you, he can't scrape up 350 bucks. I know it seems like a fair amount of money, but this guy's got to be somewhat responsible for his actions. Does he not have a job? Does he not have any money? Well, he's a student. He doesn't have a job. He's on a scholarship right now. Come on. He could ask his parents for the money. I don't know. Well, what's he going to tell them it's for? Exactly. Well, he could t- Do you know what? When people get themselves into these messes, they should find a way to get them out of it. And if you're not responsible enough to do that, you're not responsible enough to be having sex. Let me understand where you're at now, Melissa. You went to Planned Parenthood. No, I called them. And they gave you a referral to where you set up the Medi-Cal. Yeah, I think it's called, like... Oh, I forgot the name of it. I right. it down. So you're going to do that, set yeah. it up, get the coverage. But I wanted to know, like, am I supposed to be under the age of 18, or you know what I mean? I, I don't think it matters. No, it's but almost better right. if you're over the age of 18, because by legal laws, that means you're an adult, so they can't really get parents involved. You, you, listen, you've got to tell them who you are and what you are, and be honest, and right. th- there's coverage there for you. Just go ahead and take care of things, right? right. Use some if protection. You do. Would you please? Well, you know what the morning after pill is? Well, hold. I, you know what? I was totally going to do I just forgot to take a second pill. Oh. You mean you actually got the morning after I pill? think you really are an idiot. No offense or anything. Hey, can I tell you something? <laughs> no. <laughs> Next caller, you please. Want, no, you can't be really smart, because if you're really smart, we're all 
diabolical geniuses. Okay, you understand? Well, that would, that, that I'm, would, that I'm would make smart. us geniuses. And we're not a book geniuses. smart isn't street smart. And if you're going to have sex and you're going to get yourself in these positions, at least find a way to get yourself out of them. Here's the deal. She's smart enough to know about the morning after pill. She's smart enough to figure out how to get it. There's and remember a, to take it if you're pregnant. There's a psychological resistance to not taking that second pill. That's not dumbness. That's not stupidity. That is a that is somebody who wants to get pregnant. Yeah. Who knows better but has psychological resistance. Well, you know what I'm saying? And she should have the baby and stop whining and tell her. Well, angry at her. Uh, well, she is angry at her parents. Let's, let's go a little further with this. Yeah? Really? Yeah. Well, her, her dad's a preacher and her mom's a retired cop. cop. That cop. doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. I think this is a bogus call. No, it makes Ooh. perfect sense to me, though. Oh, oh, that she's rebelling. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Melissa? Yeah? Do you feel like you're angry at your parents? Not really. I mean, it's my stepfather. He's not my real dad. Where's your real dad? Um, uh, I think he's in Chino. What's Can his deal? Can you ask him? What's his deal? Oh, we're he's, good, in jail. Good. he's in jail. <laughs> yeah. Well, couldn't you go to him and ask him? I'm gonna go to jail and ask my my dad for money. I don't think he has jail in there. I mean, money in there. Sure, they get like no, eight cents a day no, for working at the snack don't. shack. But he, of course, he has a bank account or some money saved away or something. Maybe he can help you or grandparents or. You have no one that you can go to to ask for help. Not really. I'm not even from this area. I moved here a couple years ago. All right. You say calling from Watts? Yeah, we moved out here. I don't know why she did that. No, this is bogus. Yeah, this is. No, we moved to Watts. Yeah, I no. live like on Century and San Pedro. You don't sound too sad and, and nervous in the, by the situation. I know I am, but I just, I'm not like that. You know what I mean? All right. All right. Go to Planned Parenthood tomorrow if, uh, in fact, you're pregnant. Really, is there anyone that moves to Watts? I think that may be bogus, and she's trying to make some sort of point about the laws for abortion or a knowledge no. of that. No, no. No, it no. just, and by the names, and but, like, it's such a, like... A thing like, oh, my mother's an ex-cop and my my stepfather's a preacher and my real dad's in jail. It's like, it's a little bit bogus to too, me. Too, too pat, huh? Yeah. Too, it's too, too formula. Too it formula. is. It's too set out. You, I, but, I don't know. Uh, I don't believe it. But let me explain. If, if it is bogus, somebody is feeding her. Yes. Because there ain't a, a, a woman alive who comes up with Chino. <laughs> they don't exist. Women don't know who fought in World War II. And they don't know prisons. There's two things women don't know. Pri the prison system and, and wars. How world wars. How the hell do you know I that? know. And she wouldn't know what street corners she was on. Mm -hmm. So no, either this was... Something? Yes. That is really dumb. No, yeah, no. No, 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 no. Because I know about World War II because of my father and because I was very good at history in school. All right, I quiz. All right, go on. <laughs> I tell you, I'm serious. It's all okay. I ever watched with my dad. Okay. All right. Who were the... Allied powers and the Axis powers. Ask me a real question. Uh, that's 101, baby. You right. are the reason. School. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh, God, you guys suck. But no, seriously. Like, you're asking me a question that somebody would have to really study it to know. Like, ask me a question that's just like a general question. Mm -hmm. The Axis powers of Germany. In Ooh. England? In England. Right. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that's for <laughs> Oh, oh, the F word. I knew it would come out. All right, listen. We're gonna. right, I'm just saying she wouldn't have known Chino unless her dad was in Chino. That's all I'm saying. All right. We I can't understand one thing. Don't use the F word. I again. won't. I'm just <laughs> saying that's a really sexist comment, and you suck. No, 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 no. Look, there are certain things that women know and certain things that men know. I don't, I don't claim that men know everything either. He's a, he's a despicable asshole. Thank you, Drew. All right. Kelly Osborne is in here tonight. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll break bread, Kelly, because we'll uh, play something off the uh, CD when we come back. Oh, K-Rock's going to play one of my songs. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. I just kicked Kelly. Kelly Osborne is our guest tonight. The uh, new CD is Shut Up. It has uh, been out a couple of weeks, and uh, we're going to hear something off it. And... Uh, I think uh, I went What to song are you playing? We're playing uh, Disconnected. No, no, they've got to play Take no. Me Out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> play. Want to play Dig Me Out? Yeah. You do that? All right. I think that's going to be the next single, so play that one. All right, we can play too, you know. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Okay, mm. do you want Okay. All right, well, we can play Disconnected in the first and okay. Dig Me Out in the second hour if you want to do it that way. Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right, this is. Uh, 
disconnected. Kelly Osborne, everybody. Shut up the name of the CD. Yes, that's my kind of music. Believe it or not. Yeah, I could, uh, I could imagine you making a song called Shut Up. No, no. Yeah. The, the, that's the name of the album, by the way, Drew. But I know. Disconnect. No, I, I, I was in high school. It was like uh, 81, 82. Oh, yeah. In those periods. Yeah, yeah. K-Rock was playing a new wave. Yeah, it sounded like that, as they that. As they called it back then. And yeah. all that uh, stuff was uh, it's like my favorite stuff. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't know... Uh, I don't know if you how you got on to that stuff. See, uh, that's like well, the music that I love. Like, like, like from 80s, from what period? Yeah, 80s, like early eighties, like new wave eighties. I love. So, like, which bands? Like the Go-Go's and Go-Go's, the Bangles, yeah. Bangles, Bangles and and lots of stuff like that. But I also Waitresses. love. Yeah, yeah. I also love like Patti Smith and Blondie and Joan Jett and all stuff like that. Yeah, like uh, early Pretenders was really mm-hmm. uh, really good that way. Yeah, it's all all my favorite. Well, good. I'm glad someone's uh, <laughs> leading us back that direction instead of that just sort of general sort of kill yourself stuff. Yeah, I'm so stuff like, like the used people like that, you mean? <clears throat> oh, true. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Sorry. You're going to get it. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? I'm so sick of also hearing that song. like, I'm so emo and depressed that I'm going to strangle myself with my guitar string. It's like enough. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right with that. I like, uh, I like stuff that's uh, a little shorter and moves a little better. So the guys are so tormented. Yeah, I'm going to speak to Rob. Huh? He's 34. Rob? Yeah. Struck by lightning at age 14? Correct. Fascinating. I bet now you can't get a boner, and that's why you're calling. No, I actually thought I threw a left uh, left hook in there and not ask anything about my crotch. All right, uh-huh. here we go. What do you got? <laughs> How'd you get hit by lightning? Well, uh, I was leaning against a metal window frame, and the lightning hit the metal window frame. Oh, my God. Like in a house? Do you have somewhere? gray hair? Yeah, I was in a house on the top floor. Wow. And uh, a friend of mine was there with me, and uh, when I woke up, he was gone. <laughs> and it had thrown me across the room. Wow. And Do you have gray hair now? Uh, I don't. I, and I'm waiting for my superpowers to kick in, and quite oh, yeah. hasn't happened yet. But it's been 20 years. I'm not sure if they're coming. Yeah. Well, he's 14 <laughs> feet tall, of course. Well, right. well, you were you were uh, thrown across the room. I'm sort of curious about your buddy who split after you got thrown across the room. Oh, you mean you didn't see him? Well, yeah. What happened was I said he uh, wasn't there when he woke up. It was it was so loud. He told me when I found him later. He said that it was so loud that it scared him away. Oh, that. Yeah. And, well, he probably just left you for dead and was terrified. <laughs> probably had sex with you first and then left you. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> really, I would, I would really, I'd give this guy a good knee in the groin. Yeah. I mean, lightning hits you, sends you across the room. You're lying on the floor unconscious, and your buddy just uh, gets on a Schwinn and heads home. Well, yeah, I found him in the front yard. He he didn't know what was happening. He was only 14 as was well. Was he in shock? And just no, do you know what? Or? If I would have been five and I would have seen someone struck by lightning, the first thing I would have done is called an ambulance and gone to see if they were okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, this guy's got great instincts. He goes out in the front yard in the lightning storm and just sits there <laughs> and cries probably. Probably took like a, a uh, sand wedge or a nine iron, just held it over his head and wept in the middle of the oh, yard. Oh, stood there with an umbrella. I mean, yeah. it's like, come on. All right, Rob. You're not friends with this guy anymore, are you? Well, yeah, actually, he actually was the minister that married my wife and I. Wow. Yeah. The minister. Yeah. What, a, what, what an ironic job for this guy that it, has such it? great concern for humanity. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what's the question? Well, um, since then, I, I have uh, very little short term memory. All right. And uh, to the point where. If it's not daily routine, it, it's it's wiped out of my memory unless somebody reminds me of it. Interesting. Um, so I, you, can, I can access if somebody reminds me, but I can't access it on my own. Interesting. So if you're if there's something that's not daily routine, like brushing your teeth mm-hmm. or something of that nature, if but someone, you can remember it a week later. You just can't remember it five minutes. What happened five minutes ago? Oh, it's got to be a bit longer than that. Yeah. But if I get what you're saying, you were able to store memory. You're just not able to retrieve it. Sp- Correct. Spontaneously. That's right. How about learning? If you're reading and learning, trying to learn new things, can you learn new things? Um, I can, and um, more hands-on uh, reading. You know, I, I read very well, but as far as uh, retaining it and being able to access it later, like when I was in. Uh, uh, How long school. has this been? Has this been for twenty years? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no. Sorry for being kind of ignorant, or don't take me as being rude, but why didn't you do something about this twenty years ago? Well, I, I haven't found anybody that knows anything about it that's been able to help me so far. Hmm. 
Uh, you're in Seattle. You've gone to University of Washington and checked out the neurology department, um, neuropsychiatry department. No, not not that particular one. Uh, I I would think you might want to do so. There, this is a, sort of a specific memory deficit, and there may be some sort of mechanistic or behavioral kinds of things you can do to help with this retrieval process. Because your story memories, you just need people to prompt you for retrieval. Right. And that's a, a real specific phenomenon that, again, I don't have any expertise And that, here. like in some people who are dyslexic have things like that. Absolutely. It's, and it's a, it's and a, they teach you ways right. in, in which to remember things like that. Right. And they're ways of going around the block, so to speak. And they're, they're people that are trained to do this. What, uh, what do you do now for a living? Um, I own a couple businesses. My wife and I own a very large catering facility in Seattle, and then right. I import uh, car parts. All right. All right. So you're obviously you're you're successful. You, yeah, you can retain information. Your learning is good. Maybe you have to repeat things more frequently. But this retrieval thing is very interesting. It should be able to overcome, I would think. Also, isn't a certain amount of that genetic? I mean, not that getting hit by lightning helped the guy. <laughs> but what I mean is, is yeah. we all know people seem to know have uh, photographic memories for old songs. They seem yes. to know all the titles and artists and all that kind of stuff. See, I never people... remember a title to a song but, with their but photo. Kelly I can remember every one. Brought up appropriately it's dyslexia and other kinds of learning disability. Yeah, they, they can have a genetic basis to them. Uh, let's take a quick question for Kelly before we go to break. Gabe? Hey, what's up? 17? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hey, I, hey, uh, I want to talk to Kelly a little bit. Uh, I just want to say uh, you're a pretty cool chick. And, oh, thank you. No sure. problem. Uh, but I, I don't know. Everybody, like, everybody's going to say that, so... Uh, I'll just go ahead and ask my question now. Um, I was wondering, I don't know if you can say this or not, but, like, um, on this show, is is it, even though it's, it seems so real, is it changed at all? Or, like, is, is there some kind of, uh, is it, like, coached or anything like that? Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. Nothing at all? That's, nothing is ever coached. Yeah, like, I, I wasn't sure. I don't know, like, people would say, like, oh, it's fake and stuff. I, I no, because some of the things are almost too... too too random to even be real yeah. and sometimes i wonder if myself is like oh god is this really happening but it, it is real and and so many people have like said oh that's fake that can't be true and you just i'm so tired of like defending it i just don't even care anymore well you sound like you've had an ass full of mtv is mm. is true i, I have and to be as i normally say yeah <laughs> as i had in fact and and uh, it, it actually, when we were talking to your mother about it, it sounded like she'd had an ass full of it uh, as well at some point. Mm, that was a while ago we talked to her, though, right? Yeah. But you know what it is? It, you know what it is? It's like sometimes you just need a break. You know? Yeah. It's, it's hard to wake up every morning and knowing you're going to go to your kitchen and you can't go to your kitchen in your underwear or you cannot walk around your room naked or you, can, you can't, like, say, oh, I need to take a sh Someone's going to... Ooh. Yeah, you're not supposed to say it here either, but I know what you're Sorry. saying, right? Right, no, I know what it's like not being able to say the S word, but I I know, and, and ironically, I mean, here's the way life should work. You should be able to do a year, take a year off, do a year, take a year off, you know but what? it won't work perfect. that way. Know, the way that, like, my mom and I keep, like, I try and train ourselves to do is, what's 18 months of your life, what's giving that up to set yourself up for the rest of your life? Right, but for the, for I, to be honest, I'm only doing it for the money and for nothing else. Right, good. You guys got that? <laughs> Print <laughs> got that. the camera going. What, are you, what about a third season? Oh hell no! Actually, do you know what it is? I signed up for 20 more episodes, and there's 10 mm -hmm. episodes a season, so I think there will be a third season. Mm -hmm. But uh, but they're filming that all now, and after that, you're done. I, done. Right. So done. Are, are you getting a lot of money? Do, I don't know. You don't know. I, I never asked. Well, you know you're doing it for the money, I know I'm right? doing it for the money, and I know there, there's quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. But when I say doing it for the money, I'm doing it for, like... To get set up. No, so that I don't have to ask my parents for money, because I hate doing that. Are, are they, and I can pay for my own car, and are, I can pay my own phone bill, you know? Are they are they whacking the money up five ways? Yeah, or? everything's split five ways equally. It's all split down, down the middle, so equally. to speak, or yeah. four ways. Yeah. All right, good. Well, that's good. Or your dad would cheat you right out of that money, no, wouldn't no, he? No, 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 no. He'd give you a little stipend. No, no, give you like 80 no, no, bucks for no, a month. No, 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 no. He'll put all that money into his no, account. No, that's not his thing. No, yeah, that's no, his no, thing. No. Yeah, he'd do that. I believe he would. Kelly Osborne is our guest tonight. We'll uh, take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That is Dr. Drew. Kelly Osborne is our guest tonight. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. All right. 
Just uh, What are you looking at up there? I was looking to see what upcoming guests are uh, coming on the show, and when I saw Alanis Morissette, I realized unless she's coming back on, that was last week. Thursday, that's uh, last week's paper. <laughs> All right. And you got to get on that. It, it's going to screw me up. Kelly Osborne uh, in the studio tonight. Shut up. Name of the CD. And uh, let's uh, let's take one call, and then we'll talk to uh, a little surprise <laughs> caller. Cynthia? Yes. Hi. You're 17? Yes. What's up? Um... Well, right before I get into my scenario, my friend Max just wants to say, I love you, Kelly. Oh, thank you. Okay. Now, um, on a more serious note, um, I decided to call in because I have questions of, like, the way my father treated me when I was younger. Okay. What happened? Um, well, there's two scenarios that are questionable in my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, um, the first one was... Um, like, I was laying on his bed, and he was kissing me down my neck and down my stomach. Hmm. And it made me feel really, really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I was, like, 11. Okay. And my mom, you know, told him to stop, and she's like, you know, she's too old for that. You know? Okay, all right. Where, where, uh, your mom was in the room, yeah. or she came in and she, No, she saw was sitting this. on the bed. Got it. Keep going. And so, my dad was like, well... You know, she's not uncomfortable, are you? And I was like, no, but I was so thankful okay. my mom said. All right, and what was the other, the other? Okay. Drew, relax over no, there. Because I'm, I'm, I got the picture pretty much. That's well, I didn't have the picture, Jack. Ooh, feisty. Well, Drew, here's what happens. You turn the camera on, and Drew all of a sudden goes into this this fast-paced mode when normally he just lies here like a lox. He's not interested in the show. He's trying to get some shut-eye or look at his page or something. It throws my rhythm off, Drew. Just relax. Keep the, the other part I just of saw the is, hate in your eye right the there. Other part of it, but <laughs> really, it's hard to deal with him. He's a different man with the camera with the camera going. The other part I'm of the I'm sure second, you are too. He's a little more hostile with the camera. I You're think right. so too. Yeah. No, you are an yeah. asshole. Not a lot, no, a little bit. No. no. So, yeah, so the other and the other experience was. Um. Okay. Well, actually, what made me remember this experience was when I was watching or listening to Loveline a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And Adam Carolla was saying, I'm going to show my penis to my kid when he's young, so uh -oh. he's going to think it's really big. Yeah, yeah. It's still part of my plan. Yeah, <laughs> he says that about every three months, by the way. So yeah, ahead. well, the first time I heard it, yeah. um, it made me think, oh, yeah, I saw my dad when I was little, and I thought it was really big. And yeah, then, yeah. See, see, it's a diabolical <laughs> strategy. I'm, yeah. Did you want to show the boys so they, they talk about it amongst their male yeah, peers? Yeah, um, my yes. dad never no, even, nice. like... When I was a kid, when I was like two, I would, or like not two, I won't remember, but when I was like three or four, like when you remember little baby things, I knew if my dad was in the shower and I saw him, he'd freak out. Like that's the one thing, my dad, like Mom. never, I never, I never really, I never remember. Never got even, a look at it? Never. I don't, no. See, he, never. Dropped, he dropped the ball there. I'm going to show my kids my penis one time. I, I do think it's a little weird, though, that a dad would... Four or five. My, when I was probably about a baby, my dad would blow, like, raspberries on my belly of and, course. like, tickle right. me. But and never kiss my neck and well, down my stomach. That's was, a little weird. It is a little weird. It's that that kind of well, thing um, he was... Can I finish what I was saying Go ahead. about that incident? Um, yeah. Well, I was thinking See? more along, you know, what what made it so weird to me. And mm. what I, I only remember it, like, frozen in time, like... One thing, and it's me sitting on my knees in the bathroom, looking up at it. Yeah. And I just remember like the toilet paper to the right, the door closed, very very small and close place. Not like it wasn't. It didn't have like the tub or anything, and it was just the toilet and the door. Well, and, do you think maybe you were sexually abused as a child, and you've blocked it out of your memory and well, little? See, I don't know because I've been having reoccurring dreams of that like incest. In sixth grade, of, of your dad. Well, I actually have had it of my brother and my mother, but not even close to. Well, maybe this is just something that it just you're afraid of, so you think about it a lot. Um, you know, I really don't think so. Wait, right. are you? I, I don't know. I, I don't take me wrong, but maybe you're a little bit dramatic over the situation, so you you think something has happened, but it hasn't. Well, oh yeah, I'm completely open to the idea. Okay. That's why right. like it's so hard on me. All because, right, Cynthia. Come yes. On. When it's not unheard of for the relationship between a father and a daughter to be sexualized. It's not a healthy thing. Isn't that a Freudism, though, or something like but that? It, it's, it's, uh, so you believe it's, that every, every... No, it's something that happens sometimes, that the boundaries get blurred between father and daughter. And when those boundaries get blurred, it makes you anxious about other boundaries. 
your boundaries with your brother, your brother, your but brother, isn't that your mom. What he said, like every son dreams about having sex with his mother, yeah, and every daughter dreams about having not, sex with his father. That's not that's not even necessarily what I'm talking about. Now, whether or not the boundary blurring evokes anxiety around those kinds of fantasies is a whole other issue. But the fact is that when you have bad boundaries and the relationship becomes sexualized, it can become destructive for development. And it can leave a lot of unpleasant feelings behind. It can make it difficult for you to relate to men in a normal way and to feel feel comfortable with yourself in relation to men. And it's something that's sort of worth working out in therapy if that yeah, really is happening. Yeah, I just think it's a little bit weird that you're dreaming just, about your yeah, dad's penis. Well, the fact that you're having recurrent dreams and intrusive thoughts and you're still troubled by this, so that, that's enough to kind of look into it a little bit. It's not the kind of whole scale, you know, disaster that sexual abuse is necessarily, there usually is. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, it's one of those things that can be, right. need some work. I agree. Yeah. You know, look into it, but don't walk around like you're damaged goods no, and you're no, a survivor. No, 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 not a trauma history. That's history. right. Bert is uh, on, uh, Bert is, uh, well, we didn't talk about this, but he's uh, Bert McCracken from The Used, who was on here a few weeks back, and is uh, dating, dating Kelly. Bert? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say that I love Kelly Osborne, and second, I want to say that I am in love with Kelly Osborne. <laughs> oh, isn't uh, young love great, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bert, Bert been smoking a little weed? Just a little. No, no. No? He hasn't. He has that. He has that. Alabama man he has that weed laugh. That's what we we're cloning. No, yeah. No, no, no. I'm in Alabama. There's no weed here. All right. Yeah. Lord knows you've tried. <laughs> I've been to every park in Alabama. Can't score. <laughs> hey, uh, Bert. I didn't see you guys uh, at we were at they the were uh, night. Christmas yeah. Saturday night, right? Yeah. I cut out. Uh, I cut out early, but I heard good things. Yeah. Yeah, they tried to shut us off early, so we just wrecked the whole entire place. Yeah. It, was really, it was it was a good show, though. That's it was really right. good. That's uh, that's rock. And where did you guys meet? Uh, um, we met we met we met on the Ozfest. Um, uh, the first day actually, we were on the Ozfest because we did the Warp Tour and then the Ozfest and uh, transition. I think it was Milwaukee. You gonna go catch up with them in Alabama? <laughs> no. no. No, I was actually gonna, no, I was actually going to sneak off with him on um, Saturday and just fly with him, but I would have gotten so much trouble, and <laughs> I wouldn't be here right now, so I didn't go. Hey, uh, Bert, I hear uh, you guys may be moving out at some point. Is that, is uh, that inside information? Huh? <laughs> 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 I hope so, man. Oh, that's I, nice. You're, I, you're I, in love, right? I adore that girl that you're sitting there with. You talking about Drew? Oh, Kelly, Kelly, yes. You're I such didn't know. An ass. I didn't know which girl. I didn't know which one he was talking about. Drew's part. I've never been in love before, and I, I honestly have to say that I am very in love with Bud. That's nice. wonderful. Oh, baby. Hey, uh, you're talking to me. Oh, you're talking Shut to Kelly. Up. You're right. ruining a nice I'm sorry. moment here. I'm sorry. Hey, Bert, we got to go to commercial, but uh, thanks for calling, and uh, Mazel Tov. Yeah, Mazel Tov. As, as they say, you're in Alabama? <laughs> As they say in Alabama, Mazel Tov. Bye, Bert. <laughs> we'll be back with uh, Kelly Osborne after this. Hey, everybody, Love Line. I'm Adam. That is Dr. Drew. Kelly Osborne is our guest tonight. Shut up. Name of the CD. We'll uh, hear another song off of that CD in the uh, 11 o'clock hour, which we're just entering. So uh, we'll probably hear one pretty soon. Uh, we got a call earlier in the night. I announced that uh, women know nothing about World War II or wars in because general. Because you're sexist. All right. Mm -hmm. well, Kelly proved me wrong by saying that England and that Germany were allies in the World War II. But uh, Sarah is now on line three, and, and she knows about World War II, and uh, she's challenging me. Sarah? Yeah. Yes. You, you've studied this subject. Well, in high school, yeah, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I think I know more than most of the boys I've ever met. How did Mussolini die? And can I also say something? He was hung. Oh, good one. Uh -huh. What city? What was the name of the city? Oh, I don't know that. Okay. That's right. I don't know where But can I just either. also say something? Yes. In school, when mm -hmm. I went to school and I did history and I did AP history in high school, mm -hmm. there were more girls in that class than boys. Yes. Well, girls are good students. I'm, I'm not saying no, but not. The, just... And they did the... Well, at retaining the information than the boys. The one thing that boys are good at is better than girls, which is a well-known well fact, is puzzle solving and puzzles. And that's why they can park and drive better than girls. <laughs> well, that's why we get the big bucks, the toys too. that they're given when they're children. Sure. They're given problem-solving toys. Girls aren't. Mm. 
Mm. Girls are given more... Well, my brother was never really given a problem-solving toy. toy. He was giving well, an, an army man and, and Ghostbusters but toy. Your dad was sort of a problem-solving toy for him, yeah. I think. I d- promote activity. Girls aren't... And also, the way girls are socialized are not to be problem-solvers. Generally, let that's me, not necessarily true. Let when I was a kid, I did whatever I wanted. I didn't play but with you dolls. You didn't necessarily have the upbringing of most people. Well, listen, you gravitate. Hold on. American girls. Listen, listen, quiet down now. Now, here's the deal. You gravitate toward what you're interested in. If you're uh, interested I, I in problem triplets. solving, yeah, you gravitate toward that. I have a triplet, two that. boys, a girl. We did everything we could to try to coax them into the sort of androgynous but stuff. But you're not the typical. Shut up. The point, is, the point is. But what are you, what are you trying to prove here? Are you trying to I'm prove some kind of women right point? Or are you trying to prove. Yeah. All right, hold on. Sarah, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. She asked me a question. Shut up. Shut up. Drew was talking about his goddamn triplets, please. And that no matter how you push them, they would go in these directions. No matter what you tried to urge them to do, my Kids daughter, do my daughter went do. for the boas and high heels, and the boys were going for the trains and the hammers, and we couldn't force them into the other areas and, uh, see, since they were two. We, me, my brother, and my sister, we were brought up like together. We were all, all, a, all a year apart. My sister was into the dolls and the ballet and dressing up like a girl. I went for the boy thing. I played with blocks. I played with toy guns. I played in army suits. I dressed like a boy until I was 12. I mean... And yet you didn't, didn't, you didn't, you didn't get the puzzle-solving biology the way some most guys girls do. Girls don't play with those kind of things. But when you walk into a toy store... The first thing I would go to they, was the boy section. It was not the girl section. That's you, though. But what I'm saying is, what is marketed to little girls? Whatever they will buy. Things like that. Whatever they like so because it's what they'll buy. When you walk into a toy buy. store, the toys are very different. And even when they're not different, like... But an Sarah, Sarah, why invite. do they do that? Do you think so So they can't sell toys? They do it because that's what kids... They know exactly because what kids what go for. that's what we socialize them. No, no, no. They... No. A girl will walk does. into a store and choose what she likes. Not everyone regardless does. Regardless of what's they there for them. No. And what I was talking about with the toys is they've done studies about... When a little boy can't... I think you're trying to prove a point that's already been proven. Sure. Ask some more World War II questions. Okay, so World War II. Okay, anyway. All right. I so wanted to ask... Where Adam. did... There was, a, there was a famous beach in France where... Normandy. Uh, no, no, no. Where... Uh, okay, but I want to... Go ahead. Fisherman. Go fisherman. Ahead. fisherman. Uh-huh. Shut up. You can't ask questions to me that you've preloaded. Drew has to ask questions that neither one of us may or may not no, know. No, no. I just wanted to see if you knew something. Go ahead, Drew. Keep going. <laughs> I'll ask the questions and see who knows. Yes. I don't like you. There was a f- <laughs> the famous, <laughs> famous speech where fishermen and private vehicles were used to, to rescue soldiers and bring them back across from France to England. I don't know. Adam, do you know that? Dunkirk. Thank you. All right. Next. <laughs> I didn't like Next. That. She's like Who's trying to prove like points that have wait, already been proven. Like she's probably read that in some book. Well, I think she's a genius and has to tell her. her she's, she's angry, but her plan of a of a fair battle was her to figure out what she trivia knew. and minutia she knew, and then call up and lay it on me. Drew, we have we ever discussed no. Dunkirk? Why did everyone? Never. She does have no. a point. That is true. That to- like boys are given maybe problem solving toys, but that's what they like. That's not what girls like. Yes, unless we 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 talk about this all the time. Which is, you know, it's it's sort of a what came first kind of argument, and society but I'm is sorry, trying but if to a girl, sell. If a girl, yes. you went to a store and there was like, like, if it was pink blocks, girls are going to buy, it. and if it's blue box, like plain blocks, boys yes. are going to buy it. But here's her the argument: is that her, society foisted that on but, women. But people like Sarah will also true. argue that the man is exploiting. The man, believe me, is trying to make money off whatever people like. And this guy, right. whatever maximizes what he can sell. But that's, that's what, what he's girls like. For. Girls like dolls. That's girls what, like that's that. That's why they make those. That's why that's it why works, works that way. Tinkerbell? Hi. What the hell kind of name is that? You're 21. What's up? <laughs> um, well, I work in a, a massage parlor. Let's just be honest here. And um, the girls and I were just wondering, like, lots of girls sit on these couches, and not all of them are as careful as some of us. Hold on, Tinkerbell. Are you, are you on a speakerphone? No, I'm in my room to get away from the radio. Wow. Horrible. I'm really confused at what you mean. You're a massage therapist, and a no, lot no. of people... No, 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 not like that, honey. She's a hooker. She's a hooker. She's a hooker. She's a hooker. I like the way Tinkerbell laughs at the massage therapist. No, 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 Okay, so I, I don't really talk to a whore. Well, I wouldn't call oh. you a whore. Oh, she just did. Professional. I, I, 
What do you working mean girl. To? I've never really, to be honest with you, spoken to somebody no. that is. Why don't you ask your questions? Sells her, her, sells her body for sex. To be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Okay. This not, I'm not like I. I shouldn't call you a whore because that's not nice. But um, I actually call myself one. That's okay. Is, okay. <laughs> okay. So you want to ask I'm a okay question with then? this. I don't have an issue with. Uh, did, do you? I have a question. Do you? Uh-huh. What? What even made you want to get into selling yourself for sex? Um, I started at a very young age in high school, and I didn't know what else to do, and it's just progressed from there. And I'm really happy with creating a sex safe, sex-positive environment for everyone. I, think I don't necessarily benefit. think that's a safe, sex-positive environment for you. Hold on, but let's explore a little bit, shall we? You want to, Adam? <laughs> well, I was just, I'll make sure, Kelly, do you have any more questions? No, I just, I mean... Do, I'm okay with that. To me, you. sex is about love, and there's no point in... Sex was invented, yes, to create more human beings to run mm-hmm. the world, but also... It's more of a love thing that you should only do with someone that that you love, and and I don't un, like I just don't could I never just have sex with somebody who you don't love. Can you imagine yeah. h- how you might pull away from that feeling? What might have happened to you to make? I you know, I, like I don't like also like ha- did did something happen to you when you were a child that awful that made you just want to go out and like? Um, well, I, you know, I didn't have a lot of adult supervision growing up. I'll admit that, but I mean, I'm also. Hang on, hold on, Let's keep going. Uh-huh. I'm also a lesbian. You're a lesbian. Yeah. So, but you're, but do you have sex with women or men? Men. 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 Women only. Is it though. because is it because you hate men and you want to have control of no. saying I I? <laughs> oh, Kelly's good. <laughs> That's what I was going to really Keep going. I really don't hate men. I have friends who are men, and I really respect my customers. Do you get pleasure out of it? Um, like sexual pleasure? Yeah. It's like, do you orgasm from it, or is it just because no, you? No, just work. I mean, I go to work because you work. It's all about making them happy. To me, I'm sorry, but that's really weird. If you don't enjoy it and you don't get some pleasure out of it, why do it? Money. She gets money. Well, but money isn't pleasure. Money enables you to buy things that you want, but that's not money everything. It is pleasure because it affords me, like, my own home, and I know no one can take it away from me because it's mine and I live there. Well, what if you get arrested <laughs> and that could all be taken away from you? <laughs> I'm, I'm careful about that, and it's, you know, it's... Well, do you get do you get paid like? How you, old are you? I'm 20. 21. Do you get taxed on this money? Um, I don't know if I should stay on the radio. Yeah. Well, someone could take your home yeah, away. Yeah, seriously, someone. <laughs> I, what you're doing you're is living not, there not doesn't safe. Mean. Just because you bought it and you live there doesn't necessarily mean that it cannot be taken away from well, you. Well, let's talk about the lack of parental supervision and how that figures in. Were your parents drug addicts? Um, they use drugs, yes. Okay, and did they expose you to a lot of sexual stuff at a young age? No, not really. I really wasn't exposed to sexual things. I mean, but I don't understand where this is coming from. Were you beaten as a child? Were anything happened to you that you said, I could have asked for more in any way as a child? I have a theory. Not enough problem-solving <laughs> puzzles. <laughs> That's right. Too many Barbies. Too many Barbies. Not enough I, I think. Sets. I think it's also like to do the fact that you're lesbian and you like having that control over men. Well, that ooh. might be it. Yeah, there's usually some... That's right. Go away. I'm on the phone. Well, I'm gonna- don't worry. We'll get to her question. Uh, yeah, yeah, the question was, let's get to the question out of the way. The question was, can genital wart virus be spread through work, play, work through clothing? Right. Like if somebody no. doesn't wash their hands and has no. their hands and then touches my water bottle and I touch my no. water bottle. No. No. No, that can't. No, you you, really you that physically like have to like, now, touch Now, on the other the hand, if, if you had a, like a something inserted in the vagina or something for, and a few seconds later it touched someone else's. Like the water bottle. Yeah, like the water bottle. Then <laughs> you could get into trouble. But through clothing, that sort of thing, no way. Uh, uh, crabs, however, will populate the, the furniture and the clothing. And yeah. Things. That's the one thing that... That's, isn't that the only STD that you can get from stuff like that? Really, pretty much. That's, that's why, I like, I would have a sign out in front of my brothel that said, like, crab-free since June of 86. Like, you know, I'd put, like... You know, they have... Yeah. They have days without an accident up right. at the factory but what else on the makes wall. You wonder, what else does she get? If if it's purely she, just for money, what else does she get? Does she get anything else out a, of it? She's a trauma survivor. They pretty much all are trauma survivors of one sort or another. Having drug addict parents is highly traumatizing. Well, do you know what? I I have a drug addict parent, and I'm not going to go out and have sex for money. Well, but uh, it, it's been sort of contained, you know what I mean, what you've been exposed to, right? Things have been not completely out of control, or yes. You know what? what you know what? I'm it has been at times, and it hasn't. But as I'm saying, like a lot of bad things when I was a kid has happened to me. But I've, I've, I have. I, it sounds like her parents loved her. She mm-hmm. doesn't really have anything bad to say about them. Trump. Uh, so I don't really understand where it's coming from. Trauma is. It has an interesting impact on people's relationships. It really does. 
and not everyone exactly. But like what else? Did, as she says, is money. But what else does she get out of it? What else does she get out of it? I don't understand. Well, that's like some people, some when they power. have sex, like they power. say it's feeling, feeling the void that I didn't get love when I was a kid, so it makes me feel better about no. myself in that way. But no. I don't understand like where it's coming from. With she, her. It's 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 complicated, but she gets power and she gets money, and she may be an addict and she may get sort of a thrill out of it too. She may have some what she would I call would fun. I would suggest therapy. Yeah, and I and I do agree about the uh, power over men thing too, because yeah. there's uh, there's some women who are lesbians because they love women, and then there's some women who are lesbians because they hate men. I know. And then sometimes it's a little each. I'm guessing she's got a little more toward the guys mm-hmm. than she's letting on. All right, let's uh, keep pushing forward here and speak to uh, Fernando, who's 21. Fernando, hey, how's it going, Adam? Good. Hey, how's it going, Dr. Drew? Uh, uh, Fernando, how are you? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I just want to, you, you're the best, man. You remind me a lot of a PA that I work for. Oh, interesting. Just what, like, what do you do? Uh, I'm actually a paramedic right now. Oh, great. Yeah, I do that for a living. And uh, Kelly, you're a hard north girl. Uh, you just keep on uh, when people ask questions. That's really cool. You you seem to be on it like Dr. Drew. It's funny. Oh, thank you. But anyway, <laughs> Yeah, she's used to being in front of the camera. Mini-me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But anyways, my question is for Adam. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was watching a porno with my girlfriend, right? Yeah. And, Good times. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool, actually. It was uh, Erotica from Adam and Eve. But it was kind of raunchy still. So and, you know Adam? And, uh, I'm familiar with the series. <laughs> <laughs> seeing that you're the guru of porno here. Yes. Oh, I need your uh, expertise here. Because um, Taboo 2 is too uh, hardcore. I think she would dump me. Yeah. I can't go that extreme yet because i got to warm up, warm her up a little bit. Why does she have to sit there and watch porn with you anyway? I don't know, because she likes it. Well, then if she likes it, let her choose I, one. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, I, I, I want to choose one. Kelly's something feisty like. tonight. I know. I, I am know. feisty. I can't help it. Right. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Like, uh, she told me about Rescue Diaries. Can you tell me some of that? Is that, is that good stuff? Well, like, well, why do you care if she likes it? I think you probably get off on the fact that, that you're sitting there and watching porn with your girlfriend. I don't really think you care what you're young, watching. Young guys have a, have a, a sort of a, a universal fantasy that if they could just have a key that would turn women on, they would go forever using it. And this is the Spanish fly fantasy. Right. And for some women... But I still think you should let her choose one. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you want to watch a porn with her and you're afraid of what she might like and what she might not like, let her choose it. Well, okay. where, where is she going to choose it from is the question. Well, there's a... There's a we have here... Because I'm calling from Sankers. We have, like, a few porno stores. Yeah. And uh, we have, like, a really, like two really hardcore ones. <laughs> They're just... Uh, yeah. They have, like, the little things... What's too the, much... Th- what do you think is too much for her? Uh, probably something that's not <laughs> not a uh, something that's more um, laid back, nothing extreme. Cause all right. Hey, yeah, those well, I think all porn is work. extreme. To be well, they have soft core versions. So that's what well, you don't about. actually see the penis; you just see yeah. like, the girl. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, some of that, some of that stuff. And all right, go yeah. Red Shoe Diaries. <laughs> that, that was a that was a series that ran on Showtime for a long time, or was it HBO? I can't remember Fantastic. what it was. They play porn. At- Oh yeah, they do really let it nice. Cinemax. No, but it's Cinemax. it was it's it's sort of uh, softer core See, stuff. No I, I don't get porn. I just could never sit there and watch it. It's just not something. It That's just, another difference between boys and girls. But it must be the man that. Created I couldn't. That yes, the but I porno, could, porno was marketed. I couldn't man, sit right? there and watch That's two people like have <laughs> sex. Like I, I mean, I mean, I get how guys can get off to it, but it's just, it to me, it seems so played and so fake and so like mm-hmm. if I say uh like this instead of uh like that. Right. It'll turn someone on. Like I just I just don't get it. Right. Well we're not turned on by the by the grunts and No, you're turned on by actually seeing a penis right. in a vagina. No 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 no. Yeah. 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 Uh. What do you mean no? Well I mean speak for yourself. Uh. I am. What do you want to look at? I think guys like the the visual of the women and stuff. I think that they sort of assert themselves in that. I think it's. Yeah. I think I, to be honest, with you, from guys that I've talked to you about porn, it's mm-hmm. more of actually seeing someone like yeah. seeing the act of doing it than what they look like. Because if you've seen porn in movies, they're pretty ugly people. No, how dare you? But they are. The guys are disgusting, and the girls all well, look the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. And I mean, the guys are sort of porn guys. They shave their ass. They're they're tan from the tan salon. It's they got disgusting. Gold like on. I don't I don't get it. Like, if I was going to watch a porn, I'd rather see two really hot people doing it than two like uh, like a girl with big blonde hair and big lips. But, you but your version of hot guy. is 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 not the same thing that the porn connoisseur is going to be attracted to. True. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a certain breed of cat. They like uh, they like their fake jugs. They like their shaved uh, cooches. They like the guys uh, who've waxed their cracks. That's that breed. You know what I mean, it's like 
it's, it's I, like, don't, I don't get it. I don't know. It's just not the, my the, the crack, thing. The crack waxers, you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, my thing is, I'm not a big, like, I hate hair, especially on women. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have any hair. It's gone. Like, I'm not down with that. Right. But on guys, like, it's not a big deal, I don't think. You're supposed to have hair. Just leave it alone. That's right. Okay. I agree. Oh, we should see where it's Adam just, has hair. Oh, my God. It's just tough to work in the business, Kelly. When, when this, you got a chia pet growing off your ass. That's all. I just, Do you I, have a hairy taint? I, I felt it hurt my career. That's all. He, he said, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Jerome. <laughs> We're all adults. <sighs> trying to find his uh, anus is like trying to find Santa Claus's mouth. How many times do you have to wipe your ass off you've taken a crap? 2.75. Peanut butter out of shag carpet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Drew, please. Just, Let's go. Let's just carry song. baby Kelly's wipes song. on. Look, oh, in, my song. Incidentally, me... come dig me out is the yeah, name of the song. Yeah, it, come it, on. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's giving my next single, and it's like one of my favorite songs on the album. All right, here it is. <laughs> Kelly Osborne. Shut Up is the name of the CD, and I see uh, why you like that song, Kelly. It's another uh, another good one. Thank uh, it's just, you. Uh, I like, I just uh, like that music better than uh, what whatever the hell's going on. I know it's easy to complain, but... <laughs> reminds you of your youth. Yeah, yeah. Kelly's youth reminds me of my youth. Mm. All right, shall we uh, <laughs> take ourselves a little break? Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Yeah. I have to pee, so yeah, a too. break would be good. <laughs> yeah, and what, uh, you know, I'm going to forget, but I, w- I wanted to ask, as I was listening to music, uh, like what your dad thinks, how supportive he you is. You know what? Does he my like this dad, kind of music? See, my dad is the only person in the world who I care if likes it or not, because I know my mom's going to like it. If I farted on a CD, my mom would like it, you know, right. because she's my mother. Right. There's a biased opinion. Sure. But my dad, he was sad, like, oh, that sucks. I don't like it. You need to change this, and then maybe it'd be okay, you know? Right. And I played it for him, and yeah, he had his comments on some things, but mm-hmm. he generally really liked it, and I was like, oh, God, thank God, you know? Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, it's he would say it if he didn't. No, he would just find out, like, that sucks, and he would tell me. Right. To write that idea down about farting on the CD, though. Yeah. That could be my next release. Well, yeah. All right, let's, speak. let's take a little uh, break. Kelly Osborne in studio, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm uh, Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Kelly Osborne is our guest tonight. Shut Up is the name of the uh, CD. And uh, Kelly's picked out uh, a call for us to take. So uh, oh, Shut up, everyone. Talk. <laughs> we will, shut uh, up and talk. <laughs> we will uh, take that uh, call. Gus? Yes. You're 21? I'm actually 23, but it doesn't make a difference. There we go. It says 23. I just said 21 by mistake. Sounds okay. good. Hey, listen, um, I've been listening since the uh, guy who gave his dog a BJ called in. Oh. I was listening that day, too. Wow. Were you? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't yeah. think the guy gave him a BJ. You're talking about the guy that trained his dog to have sex with him? That That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. James. Yeah. Famous James. Yep. Yeah. And actually, since then, my life has gotten better. So uh, that uh, I'm actually the first caller who's ever done that, I think. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, my life has gotten better since I've listened to the show. Oh, I thought you meant your life has gotten better because you train your dog to do it, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not quite. But uh, my question is, is um, I've, I've actually started late on girlfriends. And uh, my first, I'm actually, you know, I'm 23 and all. And my first girlfriend, uh, she's a little heavier than I remember. And she lives uh, about 250 miles away and she's gaining weight. And uh, I haven't broken up with anybody yet, and I'm trying to figure out a really good way of doing it without well, making I'm girl. confused. How many girlfriends do you have? He hasn't had a lot, but he no. has the one. Are you still with this girlfriend? Yes. And you want to break up with her because she's gained weight? Well, not only that, but I'm not really all that into her. How long have you been with her? No, but I, I'm confused. Like, she's unattractive, like, she's unattractive to you now because she's heavier. Well, she's a bit heavier, and she's a bit clingy. And I think she has a history, but I can't quite put my finger on it. She well, first of all, like, don't think of me as being a bitch, but I think it's disgusting if you're dating somebody because they've gained weight. And the reason why she's probably gained weight when she's with you is because she's comfortable with you. And if anything, I would take that as a compliment. Yeah, but you said you gained weight when you were depressed. 
No, but a lot of girls, when they're with their, when they're with someone, they feel comfortable with them. They don't feel as though they have to be a certain way and like, like, keep themselves up as well because they they found something, and they don't need that anymore. Okay, Gus. Yes. But you, you think weren't into her to begin with, though. Well, I was. I met her at a concert, and I was really into her for a while there. But after about uh, a couple weeks of being with her, I kind of noticed that. Uh, well. To be honest, after having sex with her, uh, I realized that uh, she was a bit heavier than I thought she was, and she she's really clingy, and I can't figure out what's going on. Right, I don't well, like you either. All right, but the, the point is, is you are an asshole. <laughs> Gus is not attracted. <laughs> rules. Not not attracted. Anderson <laughs> rules. So now we now we hate Gus. We went from not liking. Him. No. What for whatever reason, Gus wants to break up with his girlfriend. Okay. It shouldn't be because she's heavy, because that's disgusting. Well, okay. Gus, a definite bogus feeling. Yeah, I get a that. bogus vibe, No, I too. get a, no, and, no. But she lives, she lives 250 miles out of town? Yeah, she lives down, she lives down south going to school, and then she's moving back. You don't even sound like you've ever had sex. Really? Let alone, like, be in a relationship with Ooh. somebody. Oh, a little Trekkie, uh, you got a little nerd in yeah, you, Gus? No, yeah, are you a Trekkie? Do you like Star Trek? No. Nah. Yeah. You have like a pervert voice. He's wearing Spock ears right now and holding a taser. No, let's not attack our callers. All right, hang come on. on. Yes, yes. Hang on. Go on. Kelly, relax. Go for some help. <laughs> okay, so, Gus, you would like to break things off with her. Right. Okay. How, and long, how, long, how often do you see her at 250 miles away? Uh, about uh, two weeks every three weeks, something like that. Once every two or three weeks. This isn't right, a relationship. Right. Yeah. This is going to be How many easy. times do you, you talk to her a lot? Yeah, she calls about every night. She calls once a day. This like this sounds like a one way relationship to me. This well, sounds like she's the, doing all the work and the problem is you're not doing anything. Here comes the problem is is that she's moving back up because uh, she has an internship at a uh, at a company back up uh, about uh, eighty miles north of here. That's and, still eighty miles away. That's not living near you. No, she's she's going to be a lot closer, and right. she get, when she gets back here, she's going to want to spend the weekend. Well, and let, all let's that. not get mired in all the details. Uh, Gus is twenty three. He would well, like to break up. Well, if you're not happy up. with her, it doesn't hurt to say, "Look, I'm sorry, this isn't working out." He has no experience breaking up, and that's what he's sort of asking for. Is it okay? Here's the deal: is it oh, two hundred fifty mile away girl, girlfriend who he's seeing once every three weeks? Is it okay to do it to to break up on the phone, Kelly? It's okay to I call think and break up. That's a bit of a pussy thing to do. So does he oh, really? I think you, if if you want to be a man about it, then you you go see her and you tell her this isn't working out for you, and that. But then it's weird because you're going. I'm coming up there next week, and she's, she's like, "That's great, old douche." You know? No, say I'm coming up there because I have a problem with things and we need to talk. You don't go up there saying I'm coming up to see but you. But then she's gonna go. If you have something to say, say it now. Yeah, well, if she says quickly. that, then she dug herself into that hole. And okay, all right, there the you go. Fair there enough. you go, Gus. That's how you do it. You got Thank it. You very much. And right. Gus, use my line. It's not you, it's no, me. No, 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 no. Yeah. You never use that line that because people know it's because he's trying to find a nice way to break up with someone. That's just stupid. Tell the truth. Well, what's the line? What's the truth? She's fat? She no, don't. If he I'm says fat. that, then you're an evil person. Well, that's the truth. No. Well, then you should just say, look, it's not working out for me because it's not. What's the line? It's not you, it's me. I don't like you. No. Yes. You don't yes. say that. You say, yes. look, you I'm say. not attracted to you. I, because I'm you're sorry. fat. No, you don't say that because that would ruin somebody. I'm kind of like chunky. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, yeah, I say this is what you do. Yes. It, hopefully you say, look, I got to come up there. We got to talk. And hopefully she says, well, if you have something to say, yeah. say it now. And, then you and say now it. you're covered. Yeah. Denise? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Not much. Okay. It says here you're, you're a dominatrix escort. Yeah. Is that a prostitute? Is that a model of car? Are you a prostitute? Oh, God, no. No, no. I well, should never do something You just like whip that. people for money. You don't have sex with them. She beats people. No, I have a boyfriend. I've been dating him three years. He worshiped Adam, so. <laughs> right, that they're, you're building a case against. Oh, no. how He's dare a, you? He is a sweet guy. Well, I your wife has started saying, how dare you, like every third sentence. Really? <laughs> yes. Did you, your buddy Ray? How dare you? She's Good. Um, <laughs> yes. All right. So what do you do for a living? How does this work? Um, I have a regular job, but this is ba frankly what pays the bills. Mm -hmm. um, so what is it? You whip people? Huh? What do you do? You yeah. I'll get calls. You know, they'll 
it, it normally it'll be like just businessmen. They cannot. They feel like they can't tell their wives this or something. Right. And they call you. Know, you. They call. Well, they call the service. I go. You go to their house. You go to their house. Oh no, we have a hotel. We have our own suite and everything. All right. And what goes and, on? And I have a question. Yeah. Do guys like really like like get off on this and jizz from people like whipping them? Oddly enough, I had a guy come. I did not even touch him. I rubbed his nipples. Dude, wow! I like but, but you do bring them. you do you bring a whip? I bring. I have a, a homemade whip. It's I can see you're putting the W, on. the mark of Horo. I have <laughs> on their chest. Whoops. No. Oh, on. okay. I no. have a rubber hose. Have a rubber hose? It doesn't leave as much mark. Oh my god! Right. That's it. You know, I, I learned that in interrogation like, school. How did you get the into CIA. this profession? Um, honestly, I could Passed down college. from generations, grandparents. You what? <laughs> I couldn't pay for college. And, you know, my boyfriend's really into Dom. Oh, and, that's sort of mm-hmm. You know. Dom Deloise would, or Dom But did you call just to tell us about your job, or do you have, like, a question? No, I do have a question. Go. Okay, like, sometimes when I get there, you know, they just, whatever, they come. But how do I keep that? I don't want, I don't know what they have. I don't have sex with them or anything. I, I know just touch their penis. I can't get an STD, but, like, if it happens to get on me and I do wash my hands and everything, is there still a way I could get that and still get an STD? Wear gloves. Yeah. I I'm can't. Tra- I'm, I'm definitely allergic to latex. Well, you don't have to wear latex gloves. Yeah, wear, you wear leather gloves. Yeah. Okay. Wear the uh, sexy garden gloves. No, yeah, wear, just, wear, just those wear, black, gloves. wear those tight black gloves, like, uh, w- is, would be part of the dominatrix garb. You know what I mean? Actually, I just, I got a hole in mine last week. The gloves. Yeah. See? Buy new ones. A little businessman seaman is probably not going to do you up. But you never know. But you never know. I just, if I were you, I'd try and stay away from the penis as much as possible. Oh, God, yeah. Well, who's, uh, are these guys <laughs> taking care of themselves? Um, You know, normally they're all really, really upper class. No, 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 no. Adam, ask it again. Are they taking care of themselves when they're, when you're with them? You mean, oh. are they masturbating? That's right. Only if they've been given permission. By you. Yeah. Yeah, but ultimately it all gets down to, to the release, it all gets right? Down to, yes, they take care of themselves. Okay. They, they don't touch I, anything. I, I mean the permission part. Jesus yeah. Christ! I want such a nutball on this. These show. are all expressions of walled off parts of self. But, and these where are, these are pieces of yourself that can't get expressed in other ways. Did so you do it because it makes you feel powerful? Actually, yeah. And, and where are you? You know, when these guys take care of themselves, when they get to the point of climax, where are you? What are you doing? Normally, well, I don't know. I've had a few cases where, you know, it's the whole foot worship thing. Ooh. And, you know, they're still worshiping my feet. Or they're, right. they're still being, you know, tied up with their nipples twisted right. and clamped. So you get a little, oh, uh, what we call collateral damage. <laughs> my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nipple lateral damage in their business. Yeah, sometimes stuff gets in the heat, gets uh, up Have in the Have you ever had sex fan. with anyone that you've worked with? No. Yeah, these guys don't want sex, that. right? Some yeah, of them do, but, yeah. you know, frankly, I'm kind of honest, and I don't want to cheat on my boyfriend. Yeah, keeping it real. Well, in a way, I think this is kind of cheating. If you're enabling somebody to to come, it, it is, it, it's technically cheating, I think. In the eyes of God, really, yes. Let me say to the people of America and the nations of the world that I hate your ass. <laughs> these are these are solutions for problems of very early on in development, and people come up with I just, I, to I, in, in to a way, like I understand. Experience parts of themselves that otherwise they're walled off from. I understand that you needed money for college and stuff, but are you still in college? Yeah, I'm still getting uh, working on my vet. Will history. you stop when you're out of college? Yeah. What do you? Uh, what do they normally pay? Um. The typical, just the plain rate is two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. And uh, do they tip? Uh, yeah, it goes up from there. Do you have regular clients? Uh, I have two. Yes. All right. See, it, to me, I just, yeah. I just could never sit there and beat someone up and um, well, get think, off. On I think it. they're. Like I understand yeah. rough sex and stuff like sure. that, yeah. but when you're sat there and you're whipping someone, I'm like. And like get down to your knees, like I am your moss. Like I don't get it. Yeah, like, it, it's. I think it's some kind of like mental need for power. It, it's again, it's experience a piece of self that they don't get to integrate into their experiences in other ways. But it's it's, 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 it's solutions also to problems from long, long ago. It's also tough when someone has a choice, and not a choice, but I mean, I've been eighteen and had no money, right. and you work at hot dog on a stick, and you get six ninety five an hour, and they take taxes. Hey, if out. I, if, seriously, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be working in and out. They pay you like 
eight, ten bucks an hour to sit there and like give people French fries. How long would you last it in and out? Oh, I'd eat all the food. It's my favorite place in the whole entire world. I know. How long would you would you work there though? Would you oh, work there? I would if I didn't if I wasn't doing this and I wasn't like seriously I would so totally work it in and out. You would, but I've how long that, before you, before I've, you got fired or quit? Oh, I'd get fired for eating all the food. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you, you would work forty hours a week at In and Out. You'd be I'm miserable. Not, no, you know what? I have friends that work at In and Out, and they said it's fun. It's fun for like three days, but eventually your cuticles smell like onions, and you start going crazy, and your skin gets bad. <laughs> I'm just saying. Listen, if someone said to me when I was 18 and I had zero money and I was cleaning carpets for no, a living, I get what you're saying. Like you make 250 bucks, make 250 But I pop. would find it so disgusting to be with some kind of yeah. in-denial rich businessman and beating the crap out of him. Well, at least you're that, beating on him. And then having him, like, come, like, it's, I think it's disgusting. It is. It, it would actually, I just, if anything, I would beat the sh- them for coming there. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> like, to be in there and asking, like, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. I'm just saying, like, where does this rank I- amongst, like, dr- selling drugs? Do you, do you know what I mean? In terms of illicit activities, you mean? Well, you I know, like you, most you 18, 19 year old guys. I would have sold drugs when I was 18 or 19 for that kind of money yeah, instead that, of cleaning that is, carpets. That is sort of marketing. That, that's trafficking something as opposed yeah. to expressing an emotional relationship with someone else in an intimate I, I agree way. it's lower down I on the totem pole. I think anything to do with, like... With sex, and if sex you do like that is your profession, like whether you're a stripper or a prostitute or you, you're a dominatrix, it's all because you're missing something and you're trying to find it by doing that. Absolutely. I agree. Correct. Your instincts are good. All right. Is that well, Kelly's uh, high horse? Yeah, I think it is Kelly's wow. high horse. She got, came out of the barn. We'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. Kelly Osborne here. We'll be right back. Love line of Adam, Dr. Drew over there. Kelly Osborne is our guest tonight. Uh, let's see. Shut up. Name of the CD. It is out. Go out and get it. And let's get back to the phones and we'll speak to Katie, who's 17. Katie? Katie? Katie may be asleep. Look how long she's been on hold. Well, 106 minutes. Chicks don't snore, so there's no. It's no fun listening to them when they're asleep, guys. That's right. Somebody's been on for 96 minutes here. Yeah. All right. Let's talk to Ashveer. Hey, Adam. What's up? Uh, hey, you're 14. What kind of name is that? Um, East Indian. Good times. Very good times. What's up? Um, first, I want to kiss ass for a little while. Um, uh-huh. Drew, you're an absolute genius, and I'm sorry you don't get enough recognition. Thank you, Ashveer. Um, Adam, you're also a genius, and you're absolutely hilarious. Thank you, Ash Kiss. <laughs> Kelly, I really like your hair. Oh, thank you. Um, my favorite TV show moment that you did was with Mad TV in Seventh Heaven when you were sitting on um, the guy's lap. Oh. <laughs> he was making moves at you. It was hilarious. Um, I have a question, Kelly. How was it to be, like, away from your family for that two months, especially knowing your mom had ke- was undergoing chemo? Um, it was really hard for me because all I wanted to do was be with my mom. And because me and my mother are very, very close and... All I wanted to do was go home, and the whole time she was like, no, no, you know, you have to get on with your life. You have to stay there. You have to stay there. So it was a really tough time for me, but it was also really fun discovering that I can live by myself, and I liked living by myself. And um, why couldn't you record in L.A.? Is there, like, no... Because everyone, like, my producer and the people who played on the album and the tech, they were all from New York, and if I was going to do that then I'd have to fly and pay for everyone to live in LA so it was just the cheaper way to do it that way and it was also it would have been a lot quicker so that's the way we did it I really love the Osborns and I really love the guys' show thank you oh thank you so much alright bye bye that's a hundred minutes for that it's nice he's a decent guy put my money on Ashvere I was like I I say he'll be a doctor one day Paul not a creepy doctor, like through a real doctor who loves people. Relax. Hello? Paul, you're 20. What's up? Yeah, um, I just got off a long relationship with um, my first uh, real love. and um, Porn? What's oh, that? I see. Okay, I'm thinking of my first 
Real love. <laughs> yes. It was my first love and the first time I've ever had sex. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I just broke up with her a couple of weeks ago um, because I was cheating on, on her. Mm-hmm. How long were you with her? Evil. Oh, Evil. I well, I mean, I didn't really do anything. How long were you with her? Oh, almost a year. Like, okay. not even like a couple of weeks. I think ago. some of the times that happens because people... Kelly, your age, don't know how to break up. They don't know when it's over. They don't know how to get to the breakup spot. Exactly. And they start doing things before they really admit to themselves that this is over with. They don't want to let that go. Exactly. I I, I, I kind of prolonged it for a long time. And I don't know, we started having sex and it got even harder, you know? Yeah. Because you get chained on, kind of. Absolutely. All right. But anyway. How'd you cheat on her? What'd you do? Well, I started seeing this other girl from my work. Mm-hmm. Well, did you actually, did you make out, did you actually do anything with her? No, not a, not while I was with her. All right. Well, so maybe that's not cheating. Maybe that's just hanging out with somebody that you're interested in like that. Yeah, but it's, don't you think it's that's hanging awesome? out with a plan. It, yeah, it's, but, but it, the thought, you know? Yeah, all right. Well, I'm sorry, but even though I have a boyfriend and I truly love him more than anything, that doesn't stop me from seeing a guy on the street and saying he's hot, and that doesn't stop him from seeing a guy and thinking that she's hot. Yeah, but you're not hanging out, going to lunch, and yeah. sort of laying the groundwork he, for your next relationship. He just didn't know how to end. He just doesn't know how to do it. And it's time. Don't, don't get to the point that you're being disrespectful to the other person and potentially hurting them. Go ahead and end it. That, that's yeah. more... That's more um, kind, believe it or not. It's getting a little more tangled, though, you know what I mean? Um, my ex-girlfriend started working at my place because I got her a job where I work at. Yeah, so smooth. now I see her, and the girl I was cheating on with her um, works at the same job, too. Fabulous. And, yeah, I know. And now that I see her at my workplace... What kind of work is this? It's retail, electronics. I don't want to say a name, you know. I'm kind of... All right. I don't I guess like they're working at Circuit City or Best something. Buy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, it might be smart of you to hop ship if it's not no, a job no, that so you're really into. Wait, well, just don't do it in a mean way. I mean, if, yeah. if you honestly did love her, say, look, I really I really do love you, but it's got to the point where I just, I, I don't want to be with you in that yeah. way anymore. And I just... It's not you. It's not no, but don't you. do that. It's not me. you. It's me. Think that I never works. You. It makes people just feel awful. I've had so many guys do that. Really? Too. What? So many guys have said, like... The first real boyfriend that I ever, ever had mm-hmm. pulled that, it's not you, it's me. And it ruined me because I knew that that's just like the cheap way of saying I don't want to be with you But anymore. you would have been ruined if he said I don't want to be with you anymore. No, I, you know what, because, yes. because when you said that, you know that it is you and you're like, oh God, what did I do? And when he yeah. goes, look, I just don't, it's not working out for me and they tell the real reason why, then it just helps you get over it quicker. Yeah, so I mean, if, even if they're a little bit crueler... Yeah, it, it, help. it just helps. You can, All right, you well, in, in that vein, don't say you love her yeah. and you can't be with her because that sometimes well, gives did, them something no, but to if cling you, to. But if you did love her, don't deny that. Yeah, but did, I, I know, I don't but anymore is stay, like the reality. Stay away from well, I believe that. that maybe you don't love her because you never... When I say that I love someone, then that means like you never stop loving someone. Mm-hmm. You just stop seeing them in the same light. Well, wait, what have you said that about 15 times? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look. Here's, here's what I'm saying. I think we can all agree on this. If you're going to break up with somebody, don't leave the door open for them. Say, look. Yeah. It's, uh, that's kinder. Right. Hey, you're not a bad person. I'm done with this relationship. I'm sorry if you're hurt, but we're going separate ways, and there's no there's no light at the end of the tunnel here. Mm-hmm. Take care of yourself. I, I, do, I do care about you, but we'll not be back together again. That's right. No, I'm saying that to you, Drew. Oh. That's not an example. I'm saying I'm done here. No, I liked it better when you said it's not It's not you, it's me. <laughs> I don't like you. Yeah. Okay, Kelly Osborne in studio tonight. Take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Well, that about does it. Adam has uh, taken off early. Kelly, thank you so much for coming in here. It's just been a, just uh, a joy and a pleasure. I, thank we're you. We're standing on the hall saying... Can you imagine any of us, all the guys hanging around here, being 18 and having to put up what you put up with in terms of having cameras falling around and be able to sit down at a radio program and just perform the way you do and be on top of things and as spunky and as clear and as communicative and uh, 
That's a much more <laughs> pleasure. No, it's really been a pleasure. You're, you're, uh, well, you're thank you, but I've contagious. always wanted to come on the show. Always. Well, you're always welcome back. So I was like so excited when they asked me to come and be on it. Right, you are welcome back any any time. Shut up is the name of the album. You're going on tour tomorrow. Did you say? Um, I do. Yeah, I, I leave tomorrow to go to Boston. I'm doing, uh, I think about eight radio, I'm not about five radio shows before Christmas, and then in January I go on tour. So I'm really excited. Any cities lined up yet? You know. Don't I don't know anything about it. So, so I'm, I'm like, I'm there, you know? She'll be coming to a city near you, and a venue near you. All right. <laughs> Shut up is the name of the album again. Just so, Shut up. All right, I will. So, Kelly, thanks again for coming in. Please come back Thank soon. Thank you so much. And, I had a really uh, great time. Good luck today. with everything. And this is Dr. Drew then on behalf of Adam Carolla saying mahalo. When you're, like, eating out a girl, did you get any of, like, your juices in her mouth? Is that bad for you? No. This has been Love Line. Opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.